Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to show you a curbside computer that I had found. Uh, I found this about a year ago. Uh, I live down the street from a fast food joint that I was going to and there was a house with two computers out on front. You know how um, people leave stuff out on the front lawn and they just for people to take? That's what this was. Uh, but before I did that, I did wait to make sure nobody was putting it in there and the guy didn't really care if I took it or not. He didn't want it. So, uh, this is a Compaq Evo. This is one model of this. Uh, as you can see, it's got a brick for a power supply. The CPU fan looks a little funny. And you have this black thing right here. Well, what is this? This is the hard drive. I already upgraded this uh, a couple months ago. The fan is the original fan, and if you look here, this is a laptop CD drive. This is what they call a slim form factor. Now, some small form factor desktop machines, newer ones, do use a laptop drive. Uh, it's good on space, but the bad thing about it is, is you pay more money for it if it goes bad. So, without further ado, I'm going to take the hard drive out. So we have this on here. You have your IDE line, and you have your Molex. So what this does is you slide it out, turn it up, and you go like this. This is the CD drive. There is a green tab. I'm not sure if you can see it on camera. Pull that and drive comes right out. Now, the problem with the drive here, I'll pull it out. If you look at the IDE connection, it is very, very small. It's designed for laptop parts only. And there are two IDE connections. There is a they're both 40 pin. You have a regular size one, which is for hard drive only. I did try to hook a regular DVD drive up and it didn't work out. So I didn't like it, didn't recognize it. And as you can see in there, the CMOS battery is under there too. I did not change that yet. So turn this around, put that in there and there you go. But first, I'll pu pull this out again. This is the board right here. You have two IDE lines. You have this one, which is the regular one, and the one I just showed you. Now, on this particular computer, the BIOS does not allow me to hook a DVD drive and a hard drive up to this simultaneously. It will not work. Now, I'm not sure if you can see in there or not, but the CMOS battery is right here. And at some point, I replaced that. Now, when I got the machine, it did have Windows XP on it. Um, I, wipe, I took the hard drive out and I wiped it clean. It was used for one of the businesses in the area. So, I'll move this. This is the case. It is a bit rusty. It was sitting out for quite a while before I got a hold of it. I got a CLR of this, but so ironically, this fan right here is not a CPU fan, it's a case fan. But since this is so small, they put it on top of the heatsink and it pulls air out and it works quite good. So I'll flip it to the back. These are the tabs to pull it out of the case. You have the green, you have, just like a normal computer, you have a green, blue, and pink. Microphone, uxin, uh, speakers. 
you have four USB 2.0 ports and it's VGA out. I cannot add another graphics card in here because there's no room for it. And the memory was upgraded to a gig at some point in its life. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put just like this, push it down and and that's not going to go anywhere. So this does power on and I am going to do that right now. As you can see, my TV is off. This is a TV, as I stated in other previous videos. So we're going to turn that on. Now, to note, Compaq is owned by HP now. And when I boot this thing up, I haven't changed the CMOS battery, so you're going to see a screen that confirms that when this computer was built, HP had already bought Compaq. says the name okay as you can see up at the top of the screen there it says Hewlett Packard system hardware test this is a post test it's telling me the battery has become discharged which means the CMOS battery in this machine is not very good I do have to replace that at some point. I need to go get another one. So basically, just like on any other computer, when your CMOS battery dies, you have to clear it. So it's given me a couple different options to do, which I already know how to do, but this is for, uh, let's just say, someone who does not. So in this case, we're going to go to F2 and see if it's still there. Ironically, today is Friday as the shooting of this video, but the battery is so messed up that it can't contain the voltage for the clock to advance. The, the, uh, the internal clock, it's not damaged because if it was damaged, it wouldn't be keeping time at all. So we're going to push F10. Even though I didn't change these things, I just like to save it to be safe. You have boot on LAN, which is basically it'll still receive updates. Even though the computer's kind of technically not on, it's kind of hard to explain. I can never really explain that one. You hear the Windows XP sound. Now, when I reinstalled Windows on this, I had to go find the drivers. And it does take a little bit of time because this particular model of computer is very, very old. So what I can do now is it's fully functional. And if I go here, Service Pack 3, because I am putting it in the arcade, I have a, uh, a home-built arcade, I'm going to put a KVM switch and hook two boards up at the same time and I can switch between the two. So if we go to hardware, remember this is Windows XP. These are all the stuff that it has. I can't go online with it. So 
so I am aligned with it. I'll do the updates later. Okay, so if you look right here, four CPU, this is a Pentium 4, aka P4, gigahertz, a gigaram. Okay, yeah, it can handle Windows 7, memory-wise, but board-wise it would not. And works just like a regular machine. So, anyway, that's it for this video. Please comment, like, and subscribe.